Yes, good morning, good afternoon, and for some of you around the world, good evening. I'm extremely happy to have today with us uh, Dr. Monica Torres uh, and have her as a guest, uh, and you'll very soon learn why. First of all, uh, Dr. Torres has been at Donna Anna Community College for eight years. She was first the Vice President for Academic Affairs, and for the last three years, she's been serving as the President. Before this, she was a professor in the English Department at the New Mexico State University. Dr. Torres has a very special interest, and uh, she was focused on 20th century uses of words and images, and study how they shape our understanding of race, ethnicity, gender, and class in the United States. As a president, she's marshalling the college effort to ensure that residents in the region can not only access the services of the college, but also can benefit from their experience. And this includes a number of activities, such as learning environments that are healthy and productive for members of the community, such as developing and cultivating resources uh, at the college, and finally, adopting new technologies, such as the ones we're going to talk about today, XR, that deepen learning, enable students to learn better, understand concepts uh, in a deeper way, and perform overall in a better way. And make sure that we provide, uh, they provide social mobility once graduates enter the workforce. So with that, welcome. Uh, and may I, may I call it Monica? Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> okay. And you may call me Dan, so then we got rid of the formalities to start with. Uh, so first of all, if you don't mind sharing with me and also some of the listeners, uh, tell us a little bit about your college and your role in the college and where you see the colleges today and where you would like the college to be in the near future. Great, thank you, Dan. You know, Doniana Community College is a comprehensive community college in southern New Mexico. We're about 40 miles from the U.S.-Mexico border. Uh, we're close to the Texas border, the New Mexico-Texas border as well. Uh, we have about 7,000 students that, that we serve, and that includes credit students and non-credit students. And, and like all community colleges, we do a lot of adult education, uh, career technical education, transfer education, and then and then uh, we also have a small business development center that does support small businesses in in, in the region. Um, one of the um, things that we've seen, and as we know, COVID COVID revealed lots of fissures in our society. Um, we knew that there are people who have resources. We know that there are people who don't have resources, and certainly that got revealed even more during COVID. And so one of the things I see the college doing is really, in the next few years, is really working hard to make sure that those folks who were impacted by COVID, uh, but also were not, didn't have access to lots of resources before COVID, to make sure that they can access higher education. And, and so that's, that's kind of my mission. And that's what, what I'm putting kind of on the table for my community at the, at the college um, in terms of um, an urgent mission uh, for, the next, for the next few years. Excellent. So would you mind sharing with us some of the key challenges that you see in this effort and how you plan and how you address those issues and provide solutions? You know, I think there are, um, I, I would say there are a, a couple of key key challenges. One of them, uh, I, and I would say, I, I was just speaking about this, is the idea of equity. There are people who have greater access um, mm. to, to educational opportunities than others. And, and that's, that's one that we, we have to address and that, and that we will. Um, I, think, I think one of the things that we also saw that, that is, a, a, is a challenge is we saw both the possibilities of uh, technology We've seen the possibilities of technology, but also the limitations if we don't deploy them well, if we don't train people, if we don't have great expectations for how to use technology in educational environments. So that's that's um, kind of a second challenge I see. And I think the third one, and maybe I'm thinking about this because I've been in the business for a long time, is that young people today have really grown up in an entirely different world using different technologies, seeing different challenges, kind of social and economic and political challenges than many of many of the folks we're teaching. Um, and so I think those are those are the sorts of challenges that we're, we're dealing with is how do we prepare students for a world that we didn't experience when we were in school? 
So, so some of the things that, that I'm thinking of is, and it, this was one of the things obviously that attracted me to, to Eon is, is that um, our students grew up in a technological world, a far greater technological world than we did. And mm -hmm. so we have to keep up with what are those emerging technologies that, that they're prepared for, some of them have already used, um, and they're prepared for, um, and, and, and how do we adapt those to, to, the, to our environment? I think that um, where that appeals to me is not only does it create a better learning environment, right, for, for students, um, but it also, I think, introduces students who may not have access to, to advanced technologies. It introduces them and gives them skills that they might not otherwise have. But of course, one of the other things that I'm thinking about is, is the idea that it requires us not only to adapt our instruction for technology, but to adapt our instruction for constant change for constant um, evolution, right? Of not just technology, but our, our society. How do people learn and then learn again, and then learn again, and then and then learn again? Um, and so, so those are the some, some of the things I'm thinking about. And then I'll, I'll just, I'll close with this. You know, I think a lot of times educational institutions have had the attitude, we will build it and they will come to us. Mm -hmm. And there have been many decades, right? Perhaps generations where that's been true. We have built our institutions and, they, and students have come to us. That's not true anymore. Things are changing, at least in the United States. Things are changing around high school demographics. Things are changing in terms of older people wanting to come back to school, returning students. And so part of it is how do we uh, engage our communities in ways to make sure that those folks who want to get higher education or can benefit from higher education, how do we do that? So one of the other things is we're, we're really um, emerging developing a community interaction, community engagement, much broader community engagement um, strategy than we've had in the past. So those are all the pieces, Dan, that I'm thinking about. Yeah, it, you have your plate full, I would say. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure that I can add a few things to that plate. But, you know, as an outsider, because my original background is engineering, not, not education, but I've been exposed quite a lot, I see many challenges. So I just mentioned a few. Um, one of them is that, you know, as things progress and technology evol evolves, we we are migrating from, a, let's say, a period where we had to learn a lot, memorize a lot of facts, right, uh, that were in libraries to now internet providing all the facts, all the information. Uh, and with that comes also the problem that you don't know what's right information, misinformation, which, uh, you know, in libraries, they wouldn't allow books. They were, by the way, Monica, just for benefit of everybody and yourself, there's a little camera there. If you can try to send to, <laughs> sorry, to send to yourself, you have to see all of you. But okay. uh, I appreciate it. Um, yeah. So, so what was the right information? What, what is, uh, what is information? How do you filter out the facts uh, that because libraries would filter for you, but now there is no filter. Other big challenges I see is that the technology and the job change so fast. So it's like a running water, and how you grasp that. And how can you adapt the programs required to get that job? Because in community colleges, part of the goal is to make sure that whether it's you've grown up and you want to shift career, you get that job. And how do you cope with the financing of all the equipment? Because many of these jobs require very expensive CNC machines, MRI devices, uh, makerspace, fab labs, all, all these things that cost millions and millions and they get obsolete by the time you purchase them. Uh, I would say that's another one. What else? I would also think that as you migrate from facts to basically uh, more uh, lectures, I think that's the way we teach in a community college environment that you are very hands-on, which I think it's important, but you enable that problem solving. I would almost think that that becomes very important. How do you solve problems and train them not for the problem specific, only the skills, but also to have the problem solving mentality. So those are just a few that I have as an outsider and, and uh, I don't have answers for them, but, but I feel for the challenges. There is one more thing in the, and that's financials, right? Money, because, uh, and that's why I hope the current administration holds their promise to make really education available, accessible, affordable for everybody. I you know I have the privilege to, to grow up in Sweden and in Sweden I got my two masters paid for, they actually paid me to study, not only do I, and then, and, and, and it didn't cost anything, the, the fee is zero to do that. And also the PhD, I never finished it, but 
it was paid for. So, so we believe, we, I come from a society where we believe knowledge is a human right. Uh, and and um, I think that's extremely important for a society to thrive. This is not to be generous, or, but to continue the American dream. Right. I think it's crucial that this American dream encompasses everybody, not just a few. And unfortunately, what I've seen since I emigrated to this country, I've seen a lot of things that I don't want to get political here, but just matter of fact, we used to be number one in research, we're number 28. We need to be the most immigrant part. That's the reason I'm here. I would never be here if it was not an immigrant friendly country. I mean, and this is what America has built. Everyone is an immigrant. You are an immigrant descendant, everybody is. And, and that's the blood of America. That's what drives America. Uh, that's what sustains the dream. So I would say there's a couple of things like that that concern me a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I have two kids. One of them, you know, is accepted to, to Ivy League. And, you know, 95% of families cannot pay that, or even right. 99. I mean, it's 500,000 bucks. If you have four kids, it's $2 million. This is unattainable. So we need to do something about that. I do think, though, I'm an optimist. <laughs> so I do think technology can play a huge role, right? And I'll come to that a little bit later. But uh, And I think what we are doing together, it's very exciting. So so people that don't know, can you share us a little bit what the, the, the program, that the grant program that you have uh, embarked on? Tell us a little bit about the number of students and... Uh, you know, which pro, which areas you think this would be valuable, just, just for the benefit of someone, other college that may contemplate this. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, I sure will. You know, we actually are, uh, so we signed an agreement with Eon in, in something like April. I think we did March or April. Um, and part of what we've done is, is over the course of the summer, we trained 40 faculty and staff, got them their, their initial training. Um, what we're doing right now is we're setting up infrastructure, right? That's that's kind of our task. Um, so we are, I think we've got something like 10 of those 40 involved in actively actively developing materials right now using the XR, XR platform. Um, those faculty, we have not actually, we're, we, we're anticipating deploying it more fully to students. We're starting to poke around a little bit with students now, but more fully in the spring semester. Um, because everybody's still working on development of materials. But I can tell you that some of the areas we're looking at, what I'm excited about is that we're, we're working on the credit side um, and the non-credit side. Mm -hmm. And the two areas on the credit side that, that have really kind of leaped forward to do, to do this work, to start, start using the XR platform in, in classrooms, are the College of Education at New Mexico State University and Doniana Community College, one of the branch campuses of the university, uh, the college that, that I'm at. And on the non-credit side, for example, we have just started, our, our person is, is, is developing instruction in, um, oh my gosh, um, commercial driver's license training, mm -hmm. um, also uh, virtual forklift training, because those are two needs in the regional economy that, that mm -hmm. we have. And so we're trying, to, we're trying to get that up and running. Uh, we also are working in the area of, we're developing materials in nursing, in exercise, physiology, um, in education, we have some people doing some interesting work in education. Some of them are doing um, some lessons in bilingual education. Um, they, we have some folks who work with uh, autism and they're developing some lessons for autism. Um, and then we also have uh, drafting, drafting and construction technologies. That's one of the areas at DACC that's kind of jumping on board right away and, and moving forward. And then digital, digital media. So we have faculty in all of those areas that are now developing their materials. Um, and and we're plan I think we'll do a little bit. Some, one of them, one or two of them, will have some deployment ready during the course of this semester. But most of them will have materials ready in the spring semester, um, and we'll I, we'll start to see much more of a rollout. What what we're excited about is that as we develop those materials this semester, we will now go out for a second round of training with mm -hmm. faculty and saying, look to see what's possible. Here, here's kind of what it is. And so we'll, we're gonna do some sort of event, I guess sometime in October to introduce more people to the platform. But, but we're, we're grateful to the, to, to the deal that we have with, with Eon Reality that really opens up um, what we see as an, incredibly, um, an incredible opportunity to create, creating richer 
uh, learning environments than, than we've had before. And as you know, we, uh, you, I, I believe, I think you know this, we, we also have been, had an Apple iPad initiative for about three or four years. So we have some programs that are one-to-one um, and then we have a lot of general education faculty who use it in our, their classroom. And we've done a, just a ton of training. And, and so we're looking at how we marry the two um, to provide to provide kind of robust environments in our classrooms. Listen, uh, this is uh, very exciting and I'm so happy to hear it. Uh, there's a bit of an echo there. Uh, especially the uh, what the disciplines that you mentioned, right? But also the Apple initiative. And I think it's time to share my first little secret. I promise to give you two little secrets. Okay. <laughs> uh, because this has everything to do with the Apple and your commitment to the iPads. Because as you know, these iPads contain, among other things, LiDAR technology. And we are releasing two products that we normally that we will offer you as a part of this uh, relation. So it's included, so to speak, to to try. And I think, I believe after this five, 10 minutes of what I'm sharing, the October event it will be something that you will be able to convert many souls, many more souls, I should say. So for that purpose, I will share my screen. So there'll be a little ghost effect that will take about 10 seconds here, even less. And you should be able to see my screen. Is that correct? I do. Okay, so let me share with you what this is all about. So first of all, we are committed to uh, this grant program that I, we have with you, and it's actually expanding from just being XR to what we call the knowledge metaverse, which is encompasses VR, AR spaces in which users can interact with a computer-generated environment and with others. And um, we are rolling this out, as I mentioned, I'm traveling like a madman now to meet all our partners. and. Uh, I was just recently with the Minister of Education, Ecuador, and they are doing a 60,000 student rollout uh, in, in basically a national rollout uh, that, that will convert a lot is TVET because they have only $800 per student uh, at the moment for, so they need some help and they can buy all the equipment. Um, there, the Panama is, we are doing a, a partnership similar to you with the University of Panama, but we also met with the minister that they also want to do a very large rollout uh, in the country. And likewise, in Jamaica, Jamaica is interesting because one of uh, uh, other academic institutions called the West Indies University uh, are, have deployed this with success and they want to duplicate and like us in Bahamas. And I just spent two weeks in Brazil and there we work with, you may know this organization, Senai. And Senai is, I think, the world's largest TVET organization with 4 million students. So very exciting stuff. Now, what is it we do with all these uh, people? So let me share that with you. I didn't mean to turn on the disco sound here. <laughs> but uh, OK, so this is started involuntarily. Let me just stop that. OK. So you familiar with the, the so, so what we are doing is what we call merged XR, merging real and virtual, spatial meetings, uh, which is the ability to teleport yourself to a real place in real time. XR campus, which is blending the physical brick and mortar equipment with an endless amount of equipment in the virtual uh, space. So community college can uh, afford it. I'll give you an example. We just signed a contract with Butte College and they have this maker space. It's a $50 million grant, but it's one college of 115 colleges. And the other colleges felt that, okay, why were we left out? So now we are scanning that uh, and creating a, a virtual, uh, um, virtual maker space that everybody can enjoy. And then the last one is what we care about. We citizen engagement, community cohesion, and XR enabled communities where we actually introduced something we call citizen science, which is very popular in Europe. I don't know if you heard the term, which is about the abilities to, how shall I say, get proud community participants to share their experience in their environments. And to do that, we have two new products. The first one is called Merged XR. And what this is, uh, is the ability to, uh, basically create the digital twin. So with, with your iPads that you have from Apple, you are just walking around with it and in seconds, it takes seconds to create a scan with this uh, solution. That's the step one. So you can walk to an engine, for example, here, 
You can create the scan in real time. That's a that's an Apple uh, iPad. You get a 3D model. Then you start the injection process. Now, historically, you inject in this by inserting them manually. But now we actually are using artificial intelligence. We have a partnership with, uh, with integrating Google Lens. So it recognizes what that component is, assigns it an annotation, and then automatically generates the knowledge portals, videos, text, pictures, and encapsulates that. So inanimate objects come to life. Once you have that, you can sync it. You can overlay the digital and the virtual together. And then you get in the physical space annotations, right? You can see alone in teams or even teleport this over distance. So any location. So now instead of just looking at objects, you can share this with avatars in environments. So the meetup that we used to have in XR meetings now has converted to a space. So now, you know, because I, I know you by now, you have a lot of creativity. So what can you use this for? You can use it for almost anything. You can use it to, if you are in IT and you need to train an IT technician how to uh, to handle maintenance repair operation, you have your 3D scan, you can overlay the scan, you can get instructions in real time. If you are at the community college, but you may not be able to buy all the equipment, all the robots, everything you want to train your students on, or ventilators or what have you, you can access that through this environment and train them. Like in this case, students are programming this for um, actually for ping pong of everything. Or if you're interested, like I am in art, and this is a Spanish environment, it's in Catalonia. So what it's Catalonia, I bring Catalonia in my living room. So here's my uh, living room. You can see behind it. So I hold my phone. Everything I show you here requires phone or iPad, nothing else, right? So, and then I can flip a switch and suddenly I am 100 years back in Catalonia as I walk through this environment. Or hospitals, we have now a big collaboration with CHOC, Children's Hospital, and this is to help uh, nursing for training, but this is also to help the patients, pediatric patients in uh, dissolving anxiety when they actually go for procedure by using this technology to help. Or what you are interested in, and I know it's close to your heart, which is civic, uh, civic community college activities. So in this case, this is in Laguna Beach where I live. We scanned the city center, the scan parts of it. And this talks about, uh, in this scan, we encapsulate information about freedom, about equity, about things like that, that they, they can then GPS position to their own location. Or finally, I'll have two more and then I stop. So this one is if, let's say, if your room is too small, you go to your backyard and now you're an operation room, you walk with your phone, you can look at the tables, you can interact. Uh, by the way, the, the truck drives by <laughs> in reality. Uh, and and uh, the, 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 the doctor can be from Stanford, the lady can be from Saudi Arabia and you communicate physically and you are there, but you can then switch this with any other environment or, Let's say that the backyard is not big enough, so you go on the parking lot in the street and you are in a factory environment and now you train for a scenario which can be an emergency procedure, you actually do that with spatial meetings. Or finally, you have your nurse and you want to train CPR, so you record her with the avatar how to administer life-saving uh, operations. So those are some of the, the options that we'd love to introduce with you in October. And the question is, what do we want to achieve with this? What's the key goal? The key goal, I think, is uh, four. One, it's knowledge is a human right. That's the, that's the fabric of our company since 22 years. Number two is we realize that to build an auto metaverse, you need a community effort. It's not one company. It's, it's thousands of companies and millions of people. And this is something that has to be owned by the community and the academic institution. The third one is job creation. There's 2.3 million new jobs created in XR this year alone. So we have a, something we call Metaverse Academy that I'll come back to. And the fourth one is research. So those are the key this elements is, uh, we want. Now, what is it we expect from, um, from uh, uh, you know, our partners? What can they do benefit? You know that, so I'm not gonna bore you with that. 
but learn faster, remember longer. One thing we've seen now pre and post, especially during COVID, is that to increase student enrollment, retention and satisfaction, this helps a lot. We, we actually see numbers now. We can see 30, 40% increases. The third one is to own these assets, meaning that the student or the community college should own the asset. And we are using now something called non-fungible uh, tokens. So the copyright can never be plagiarized. So if you own that asset, you can share it for free or for a fee. If you want to monetize, you can do that. But I think those are the key things. And the deliverables you're familiar with, what we've added uh, to, to this is two new products, which you'll get access to. Uh, and we added more on the resource side. And uh, the way this works, you're also familiar with, what we added there is the Metaverse Academy. So that's the new thing. And the last thing that we added is what we hope to do with you uh, as this develops is once we prove success, I know Apple is very interested to use you as a case for not only New Mexico, but nationwide. And what I will be very keen to do after we reach the success is to help you to roll this on a governance level on a bigger scale, right? Now, last point, and then I'll stop. Sorry for my long monologue, but this is important because this is about jobs. Uh, and I think one role people go to, you know, community colleges to better themselves, to, to find new skills and use those skills to, 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 you know, find a better job and a better life. Um, so we think this program is super important. Uh, normally we charge for this, but in your case, because of this program, it's offered at no cost. So the why we do it is for student engagement, in strengthen your value proposition as an academic institution and create new job opportunities for students. So what is it? It is an academy that has a multidisciplinary course. It, it contains 10 different uh, aspects of it. It's multidisciplinary. It's also provided online learning, online certification, matchmaking, and student exchange opportunities. So once, once you're ready, we will send you these materials actually. So and feel free to encourage your students to apply if you think it's suitable. Type of things that they learn. Uh, one XR artist, XR software development, XR lead generation manager, XR marketing, XR business development, XR customer success. Those are some of those. Um, and what's nice about it is not just theory. They actually are engaged in practical applying this. And the statistics are eye-opening. You can see, as I mentioned, uh, 2.6 million jobs created in this year, 4.7 more by by uh, 4 by 2024. So it's a, it's a booming industry. Another thing we've seen is that if you just, if you have the skills and know-how and understanding, also the salary levels are quite impressive, I must say. These, these are, by the way, real people, but the salaries are just statistics for XR at the moment. So we collected this data. And uh, very happy to say, share with you that we have actually the first uh, batch of students. I selected six students for that to share with you. And a lot of these are immigrants. <laughs> like me <laughs> a little bit younger though uh so we so let me let me share a couple of them so um uh carl carl is from uh, for example is is from senegal um and but works now in paris uh lavina is from uh, kigali rwanda and she's uh, she's now uh, actually still working for us but working for rwanda uh griffin is from new jersey Maliha is from Pakistan, but now she's in Toledo. Uh, Nina is from Sweden, but now in US. Co Maria is from uh, Colombia, and now she she is uh, also here in US. So so this is uh, this is what we see. Very exciting stuff uh, coming out, and we can't wait to 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 work with you on this program. Okay, so I'll stop there. Thank you for. And then um, I just I'll also not share the screen. Let me just go back. And I want your thoughts around this. What do you think? You know what, Dan, that, I think that's exciting. You know, we're, we're seeing companies saying, you know what, how can we, how can we participate in job creation, right? How, how can we create opportunities for young people or, or not so young people, maybe older people to, to get into an, uh, an area that is exciting, that, uh, where it's not only exciting professionally, but it also gives them a wage that uh, really creates a different life for themselves and for their families, right? Yep. Which, is, 
which is as a community college, we're completely interested. We're interested on the local level, right? But we're completely interested in companies that do that. And 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 we're we're seeing. I mean, this is this is a development in education in, in the last ten years, right? We have seen companies say, "Wait, there are these real important skills that need to be that need to be taught." Um, I need to be deployed in our economies, given what's happening, given new developments. Um, and so we're going to develop these programs to, to create these opportunities for the company and for individuals. And so th that looks really exciting. And of course, we know um, that hands on instruction makes a difference for people. Right. Mm -hmm. hands -on. Yeah. Yeah. Being you know, able, here's what I'm doing and, and I'm practicing it. Um, and, and so I think it's fantastic. It's a real opportunity. And that, that is why students, I mean, that's why students go to higher education generally, but certainly that's the student population we serve, right? Students are saying, I'm looking for a job opportunity, a meaningful job opportunity. Mm -hmm. How do get that? Yeah, no, uh, and I think the jobs are changing. I can see uh, Lavina, I mean, I never met her and she's amazing, but she can stay in her community, right? She doesn't want to leave her family and live in a, kitchenette in Paris or London where she pays, you know, 3,000 pounds for basically a rat hole, sorry to say. So, so she wants to stay with her family. She wants to improve the, the uh, opportunities in those communities. And what I really seen, and I, I have all the scars to prove it in my travels, is that these type of, uh, let's say, leapfrogs or changes in technology is reshuffling the cards. Yeah. Meaning I, I saw, I was in Singapore back in the 80s and 90s when they were poor, or let's talk about Korea. They were the poorest country on earth together with Democratic, maybe Republic of Congo 50 years ago, right? And now look at where they are. So technology, if you are forward looking and actually deploy them, can reshuffle the cards. I think that's super important. And uh, when you talk about economy, yes, it is important for many of these uh, students to see that there, there is an immediate impact. I, I put this effort, I put those extra hours, and I see something on the other end. So yeah, it is quite quite exciting, this type of activities. Um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit. I want to, I want to take that, this idea back to the local level. I was thinking about when you were talking earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, right now, employers, at least at least in our part of the country, are having a problem finding employee, employees. Employers are having difficulty. They're, they're, we're seeing bonuses, you know, paid to uh, restaurant workers, right? We're seeing that kind of activity. One of the things that I think is important about this and that I would love to make this case in my community is that um, when, when residents of our community have mm -hmm. access to meaningful job opportunities um, and get paid well, right, that that really, that really raises up the whole community. Right. That that is. And so one of the things I was going to tell you that in our county, we've just discovered something like 21 percent of people 25 or older in our county don't have a high school diploma. Mm. Right. About 60 percent of people um, have some uh, college, but no credential. Right. And so there is a workforce available for the employers in our community but we need to find them and make sure they can get the training they need. And now, of course, I mean, we th I think in terms of college certificates and college degrees, but now we're seeing opportunities where, uh, like your company that's saying, wait, wait, there, there are other ways to get trained and here's some opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. The workforce available, we need to find them and make sure they find these opportunities. Now, I think the collaboration that we forge here is super important. I'll give you an example. So I have a big collaboration in, with community colleges in South Africa. And one of the biggest problems they face is that many students abandon the school after three to six months. And the reason is simple. They don't see any collection between what they are taught and a path to a job. Right. So it's very difficult for college to have all the tentacles out and to teach and to connect with jobs, it, it's almost, I would say, impossible, right? Because you, you, you have only so many hours. So forging those relations with multiple companies, right, in different sectors becomes super important. Now, once they see the path, once they understand, the, can connect the dots, then the motivation spikes, right? But there are colleges, and I, U.S. is probably a little bit better, but where you basically serve secondhand information 
and certify them on tests with second on that second half information with second half test. And then that doesn't really apply <laughs> so much in reality. Right. And you end up with a degree. And this, this is even worse in some cases in higher education, uh, I mean, in the universities, right? When people borrow money through their nose and sit with $100,000 and $150,000 and have diploma and they cannot find a job. So, so I think the rethinking of how we call it um, triple helix, it's, a, it's actually Stanford terms, but it's very popular in Sweden. I'm from Sweden. So this is how a government works together with the industry and the academia in a collaboration, right? So the government provides the right incentives, the right instruments for, for industry. The industry is eager to get their workforce to grow and links up to, with the academia. And you have this this triple helix. And I think that is super important uh, in, in the near future. And I think it's actually more exciting for me on the college level than it is on, on the university because I'm not worried about Ivy Leagues. I mean, they will be fine. <laughs> it's like a club for naval gazing, right? They, they know each other and alumni, they are kind of set. Uh, with all due respect, we have many customers. We don't have many partners among Ivy League. We have many customers, right? Because they have enough money. I'm worried about the, and I think U.S. success as a country is based not on the elites, but on the vital majority. Because that's, uh, for the first time in a generation, we, we see in this country, which scared me a little bit, uh, that your parents are more well-educated than your kids, right? That as I say, we drop in research. Our life expectancy has dropped six years, right? And it's all linked, right? It's all education is a super important part because if you educate what's healthy to eat, that you need exercise, that you need ample sleep, that you can have, to have an ordered life, you're less likely to fall for various issues, including drug abuse and opium abuse and all these things that we see now. And unfortunately, technology here can play two roles, a good one and a bad one. We see a lot of the bad one, though. I mean, I know social media and the side effects of how if you lose artificial intelligence for the bad things. Sorry, I'm blabbing, but but I'm really passionate about those questions. And I see you are. I don't meet the person. I feel like you are. You and I are kind of concerned and want to do something about Absolutely. similar issues. Right. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I was going to ask you a question. So, so uh, using virtual reality and augmented reality, and I'm, I'm excited to look at these new products. Um, from from my side, given my current position, is really about workforce development. How do we how do we create create a good workforce development? And and there's a variety of ways. Obviously, it's just the training itself using using the tool. But mm. you know, Dan, one of the other things that I'm really excited about is thinking about recruiting uh, mm. for college through um, career exploration. So one of the things that we, we've, we're, we're, we're establishing our relationship with the public schools in, in our city, because one of the things is that there are things that students don't know. Students know nursing, they know doctors, they know teachers, they know lawyers from popular culture, but they don't necessarily know diagnostic medical sonographers or water technology, water, water utility operators, or a whole variety of things, a whole mm -hmm. bunch of things that they're great jobs in, right? Absolutely. Um, and and they are modern. They have this mindset, like for example, mining, right? They think it's dirty, it's cold. No, you, you sit there with, with a cafe latte and watch <laughs> screens and control things. You're basically one of the most luxurious, your mining job is one of the, but they, exactly, they don't know. You're right. And so how do we use the tool? So I'm interested in how do we use the tool much earlier in a human being's life, right? In middle school, for example, to 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 give to, to let them know there are lots of options here and to give them actual experience with those options without having to transport them to a campus. Um, and so so we're excited about we're excited about that. But I'm also interested in research uh, from a from a intellectual perspective. That's not my job right now. And so I'm, I'm actually would love to hear you talk about how you think uh, this technology uh, could could positively impact research because research research has changed in the United States and and 
and I, I think probably research in the United States could could use some additional support. So how are you thinking about that? If I could ask you a question. Yeah, yeah, I talk so much already, so I apologize for because, but, but we'll, I, I, I can resist. So I, I wasn't prepared to present it, but but actually, we, believe it or not, right now I'll spend the next three days before I leave for Europe in a cottage in Big Bear. And the reason for that is that we are developing a new product that addresses <clears throat> exactly what you are talking about. So I don't know if you can still see my screen. Yes, uh-huh. Okay, so let me just share this with you because I think you're gonna, I hope you're gonna find this very fascinating. This product will be released by December and this is what it does. Um, uh, let's see where it is. I see platform. I have so many presentations. Um, no, it should be here. One moment, sorry. Uh, this webinar makes me always <laughs> nervous. <laughs> Okay, so uh, super short grad programs, Metaverse Academy, no, open recent, it should be product development, product features, there you go, got it. So um, there's a couple of things that, two products that are coming up. <clears throat> one is called predictive AI and one is called adaptive. And uh, you mentioned, uh, for example, uh, students with, with um, special needs, right? Uh, autism. So we are now creating a, a version of the software that actually adapts based on your uh, your dynamic aspect. Now, one part of the adapt is what we call matchmaking. So what is it? What is this all about? So I'll skip a lot of this uh, because so you're going to have a dashboard very soon with you can see uniquely how how your students are using it, what the login is, which topics are most popular, what's the average time they spend on lessons, you'll have that. Uh, but one thing that you'll have also is this thing here. Uh, let me just go to that because there's many. Uh, we have also an AI avatar instructor that's coming up. So so this is called the mass making feature. So, so the idea is this, <clears throat> that provide companies and job seekers the capability for optimal matchmaking to link job opportunity with the best possible match. So if you are a Siemens and you want to convince people to, or a hospital, you actually are creating on the platform applications that describe how it is to work in that sector. As I said, mining. So you can actually visit that, that's one way. But the other thing is, so hospital looking for technicians and nurses. So you can use the matchmaking feature like you use LinkedIn, but we know so much more, right? Because we can measure, are these students creations or is it, are they very good at learning? Are they driven? or do they have skills, right? So we know the degree of energy and willingness based on how time, long time they're logged in. We know their score level. We know the number of lessons. So basically you can see that this is a driven learner. This is a skillful creator and the numbers don't lie. You, you can always paint yourself in a way on a <laughs> CV, but there's been no possibility. So we are going on a level like, we are almost at the level. Uh, so this is a driven creator. This is a skillful learner on a level that goes as a pilot, uh, you know, when he's certified to land on water or not. So that's that's uh, that's what we're doing. With regards to research, we do a lot. Uh, so I'll show you just some example research topics. So everything from digital clean technology with IoT, uh, we have a research program for security warning systems. We open uh, AI-based annotation generation. And I mean, I can go on and go on. The list is... Uh, w w this is what we do and this is what we're passionate. And what we do is we link up with academic institutions. They have their own ideas and we apply for grants together. So what I hope to do in New Mexico State University is to expand our program to what we define today as the research, the research program. And um, I think with that question also, that leads me to the book. So that's the last time I want to share my screen. So I want to talk about this book just two seconds because it kind of lends itself to what you are talking about. So here's my crazy theory. I'll give you a crazy theory and you tell me if, what you think. I'm super curious. But I'll take the short version, so don't worry of these pages. But it's basically based on uh, six premises. The premises number one is that we stand at, uh, uh, at the border of intelligent explosion. What do I mean by that? You know, if you look at the history of life on Earth, 
this is my drawing, by the way. You, you know, nothing has happened with intelligence for the first, I would say, you know, billions of years. Two and a half million when Homo habilis came to Earth, then we start slowly to, to become smarter. But it's only in the last 50 years that we've seen the explosion. And I'm talking about machines, right? Machines that almost in all aspects of human life, retention, amount of knowledge, processing power, are eclipsing humans, right? So now that's a, that's, that's a pretty scary thing. So that's the first thing. The second thing of this book has to do with how our brain works. I don't know if you study so much about a brain. I had to do a lot to study, but in essence, the way our brain works is that we don't, when we are born, we are like an unwritten book. Uh, and as we observe the world, so let's say I have a bottle of water, uh, when I'm looking at that bottle of water, before I touch it, my, I have in my brain a 3D spatial model, and I know it contains liquid. I know how to open it. I can predict its weight, its temperature, just by observing it. None of that model was existing. I build that model in my brain by touching the bottle and looking at it, drinking it. So it was a very tactile experience. I could have read about this in a book, but or seen a movie about a bottle, but that wouldn't be the same thing as interacting with the model. So what we are doing in our brains, in fact, is we have a sensory input in visual and audit, and that sensory input is going to a brain to find the synapses where this model is stored, okay? And then they vote between the synapses. So there are 80 votes for bottle, 20 votes for stick, one vote for cylinder, right? And the one that gets most votes, that's the one that comes in your conscience and you recognize the bottle. Now, <clears throat> if the bottle, you touch it and it's burning hot, then your whole model collapses because that's what unexpected. So then you grab it and look at it and consider and, and realize that this was a new model that I have to construct. So why am I telling you that? What does this to do with spatial? What, what it does is that the way we learn by building this 3D scan model in our brain is the way the XR and metaverse works, right? We also build a digital twin. So it's we are perfectly aligned for the natural way to learn, okay? So that's the second part of the book. The third part of the book is, okay, so here's two, two pills. There, if you saw the matrix, there's the blue pill and the red pill. We Let's accept the fact that machines soon will eclipse us at everything. The reason for that being that these machines uh, are learning. So today I just learned that AI, self-supervised deep learning, allows AI bots to watch millions of hours of YouTube and billions of uh, hours of meat images, right? So they recognize cats and dogs, etc. So let's say they become better than us on most things. And then humanity has a choice. Either A, we allow these machines to continue, and of course employers, capitalists, always want to find the cheapest, best way, and that renders humanity, a lot of humans useless, right? Uh, a little bit like a nightmare scenario, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so that's one way. The other way, and which I suggest, is that we need to unite ourselves with these machines. We need to stand on the shoulder of giants. We need to empower us beyond our current human constraints to what I would think will become eventually a superhuman. Okay, that's my that's my theory. And now, how can we do that? Of course, we can do what Elon Musk says, take little wires and stick it in our brains and, 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 and crack the skull. It sounds a bit invasive, and I think that's not the right way. Or we can uh, interact with the only part of our brain that's exposed, which is our eyes, right? So, and I think XR is one of the most efficient way to do it. So that's what we propose using XR combined with artificial intelligence, GPS, 3D scanning, Internet of Things, and have that harmony. And then the question, if you agree that this is it, then that begs the question, okay, so how do we do it? <laughs> how do you go about to do it? And I think the metaverse is actually an excellent way to do it. And I, that's why I'm spending my life and dedicate the rest of my life. And I don't do anything else. It's like a, I'm become a priest, right? So 73 countries have joined. And I think this is a world project that we have to do. And then I also do some prediction, but I'm not going to talk about it, about the, what's going to happen. 
how this impacts our economy, our health sector, our energy, our sustainable environment, our climate. And this is what I'm talking with the minister in my trips. Uh, and funny enough, there's two observations, and then I'll stop. By the way, I'll stop now. Uh, there's two observations. One is that I haven't heard this idea of unification that much, in, not in this way, not using XR. Uh, so that was surprising for me when I talk with people. For me, it's so evident. And the second issue is that uh, everybody seems to like it. <laughs> Those are the two things. So all well-educated, smart, much more smarter people than me seems to think this is the way to go. So, you know, that, that's what I'm, be careful to ask me questions. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> No, that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. I, I was thinking about this because I was thinking about humans, <laughs> human relationships with technology, right? What is, what is the interface? Uh, what is the relationship? And, and the problem for us is, is a little bit, the problem I think for your vision really is popular culture, right? <laughs> Which popular culture often has the most cynical view of, of the technology human interaction, right? <laughs> um, and kind of scary, scary views of that. But, but, you know, I, I think, I guess I was thinking that, and I have a, a much more, um, a much less sophisticated way of thinking about it, but, but, you know, technology has always been with us. We just, some of it now, some of it's so ubiquitous. Glasses were a technology at one point, right? So ubiquitous, we don't even, we don't even think about it, but you, you know, you, we've gone from desktops to laptops to tablets, um, but one of the th wearable devices, right? We're not, it, when, when you think about as it becomes, you, as technology becomes ubiquitous, then we seem to be comfortable with the human technology interaction, right? Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that I that I really appreciate about this technology is uh, we're going to see integration of technology. This, th there's just no question. That's that's what it's going to be. What I like about this technology is is that is that how um, technology comes into human spaces and how humans are entering technological spaces. Um, and what that line is, I mean, crossing those lines, those lines are going to get blurred too, right? But I, I think there's, I mean, what I what I like about it is it's the future, it's here, how do we use it? And I, what I like about Eon's perspective is is just this idea that it's, that this is a democratic enterprise. Mm -hmm. uh, democratic enterprise, it's an economic enterprise. It's a how do we build robust, healthy communities enterprise. And so it, it merges a variety of, of certainly my interests. Thank you. And I really appreciate that. And I think this is like the internet, right? So you could see a nightmare scenario where internet would be owned by Google or someone like that, right? And, and or owned for the military, that was developed for the military, right? Owned to, to, for wars. So I think this technology, as any technology, will have a lot of horrible applications, right. horrible applications, wars, pornographic activities, uh, racial, all, all kinds of bad things you can think, it will be used and it will be a million times more effective. But this technology also will be used as the internet is used for democratization to the deepest Africa, wherever I go, everybody, even if they live in a hut, they have a internet and they have mobile phones. This is amazing, right? It's illumination, health, uh, Dry driving your curiosity. That's what brought us for the last 70,000. It's not evil acts. It's the fact that we, as you, I love the way you put it, right? Glasses is a technology. So is a hammer, right? right. So is a stick. And those are what drives humanity. So I, I, I hope, but it's not going to happen by itself, right? If we only let the evil side, so to speak, to drive this, we got to drive off the road. We have to balance it. We have to, and I'm convinced that we'll do it. I'm convinced. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm hope to be a little part and, you know, 20 years from now, they allow me as a janitor at the office just to polish the floors. <laughs> but I'm I still part of this and somehow, right? Um, so I, it's exciting. And I honestly, I'm a kid at the candy store and it's such a privilege to work with people like you. I can only imagine, you know, in your community, the struggles you face, uh, and I can I can sense that the way you talk and why the questions that you you are dedicated your life to are so important. Uh, so it's going to be a, a lot of fun to work together. Absolutely, and, uh, I, I really look forward to that. Yeah. So we, I'm grateful for the opportunity, Dan. I'm grateful. Thank you. 
So I talked enormously much. This I feel a little bit ashamed that I sucked so much the air of the room. So we have five minutes left, and I would like you to talk both to the audience and and uh, and tell us a little bit more of questions. We I know you wrote a lot that we didn't have a chance to cover. So the floor is yours. Well, let me let me think. Is there? Oh, you know, I guess. Uh... I guess this goes back to something that that I was talking about just a little while ago, and that is the idea of how do we work within our communities, business and industry, government, nonprofits, to say we're all in this together. How, how do we do this together to create um, to create a better life for all of community members, right? And and I think that I guess that's and, and what are the tools, right? So obviously, I, I see this this is a tool. Um, but it's a tool in interesting ways, Dan, that I don't think we entirely anticipated. And I'm looking forward to that. So, for example, um, and it is about preparing a workforce, but it, it also is about job creation and encouraging entrepreneurship. So, for mm -hmm. example, one of the things that we've really been interested in is is that there are faculty who say um, we need we need 3D models um, and they're not all in the library, but or I want a specific a specific model that's adapted to a particular situation. And so we're actually working with both students um, and faculty, and, I, and there's two companies in town that we've identified that we're starting to reach out to who develop 3D models, right? Mm -hmm. And um, the students, this is becoming, I mean, two of, one of the companies is our former students of ours, right? And so we're thinking about how do we use this for entrepreneurship? Um, one of the other, and, and, and so that has an impact on our community. It has an impact on our community in terms of here's a business that's getting started and has the potential to have more jobs. But it's also an opportunity in that in that they they're providing services for us. They're providing things we can then purchase for for use in our environment. Um, and then and then one of the other areas is is teaching, not just the faculty teaching, but we are developing um, a group of of both faculty technicians and um, student employees who will support the development. Of 3D models, and then it's the instruction attached to 3D models, and so they're learning skills that they might come out of a degree never having learned. So how do how do they think about being? They, they might now think about being a teacher, whereas before they didn't. So so you know this idea of um, so so this is a much more robust. I mean, I think oh, this is a tool that we can use in this way. What we're finding is that there's all sorts of kind of ancillary um, um, opportunities that are going to spin off off of this project, I think. Absolutely. And one thing we found is that we wondered who's going to develop all the lessons. You know that 95% of the lessons are developed by students. You know that uh, today, and the way it proved to work, because teachers don't have time, right? So the way they kind of reverse it. So teachers say, OK, you want to learn about ventilators. Here's the materials. Go with your phone, scan a ventilator which is easy to do. I mean, it takes seconds and do the lesson and show me that you know how to reconnect this ventilator with four, four different uh, uh, tubes to say four patients versus one. That's your assignment and you have to present it by Wednesday. So now they actually do the lesson and they have to learn it. They have to peer review it. And ultimately of the hundred lessons, they select 10 that are best. So I think the, the ownership and the, you can start a business today in almost, when you open, let's say it's a little bit like internet, right? When you open the internet, there were hundreds of thousands of companies that create that to their living, right? In, I mean, I can sit with you with a glass of mineral water and come up with hundred businesses that students can do. But that's what the academy is about, to, to, to actually allow them to have the skills, not only to work for others, but to work for themselves. And that's why I think these things like non-fungible uh, tokens, that whatever they create is owned and copyrighted by them. So you can create those increasing assets. Let's say we go uh, New Mexico and we find the top 30 attractions in your in your environment, and we scan those and we create a story about them in multiple languages, 32 languages, which attract tourism, shared. I mean, I can go on and on. So right. I think, right, you, I like that you highlighted the entrepreneur aspect, which I think is essential, and how you can interact with those local companies that you are already doing and students to encourage them to do more because you know in the end entrepreneurship is everything right that's and i'm not talking about big companies like google i'm talking about mom and pop companies right and yep. uh, 
and it's and increasingly it's less of course the service industry the restaurants all these are important but increasingly there wouldn't have been zero factory works it's all services right it's right so that's where the jobs are not okay. not not where they used to be especially the yeah. well-paid ones and that's what we want we don't want minimum minimum wage jobs absolutely right that's absolutely right listen I, I, you you've been this has been a fantastic session um i promise to send you materials now uh, in a week, I'll make sure that you get the licenses. I suggest that we do a deep dive with your team on the two new products as okay. soon as the earliest uh, possible. And then in October, I'm happy to have our team to help out to get more people on board. Okay. Thank you, Dan. I sure appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. My best regards to Dan, by the way. I, I, will, <laughs> I will send him your regards. <laughs> Thank you. All the best. Bye.